Hey everyone, welcome back to Code Row, where we're learning how to code using GDScript in the Godot engine. In today's lesson, we'll be exploring one of the most useful functions for beginners and even experienced developers, printing output to the console. This is a great way to test your code, debug issues, and see what's happening under the hood as you write your script. Let's go ahead and dive right on in. So what does it exactly mean to print to the console? In GDScript, the print function lets us display information to Godot's output panel, which is down here. This is super useful for checking the value of variables, tracking code executions, and debugging issues. So let's go ahead and jump right on in. So at the very top, I'm just using the main file that I've created in the last few videos, and I'm just gonna type in extends node because we've attached this script to the node called main over here. And then I'm just gonna call my func ready, which will execute every time we begin the scene. And I'm just gonna do a simple print called hello world. So we're using the print function to output the text hello world. When we run the scene, the message will appear on the console. So I'll go ahead and run it. And now the console is down here, which is exactly where it's running. And as you can see, the message hello world appears on the output panel at the bottom of the Godot editor. This is a quick way to confirm that your code is running as expected. And now let's take it a step further. We can also use print to display the value of variables. This is really helpful when you want to check if your variable is storing the right data. So let's go ahead and see how this works. So I'm going to create two variables. The first one will be called player name, which is going to be row, which, and another variable called player score, which I'm going to just set to 100. And now I'm simply just going to print player name, and then I'll hit a comma and type in the actual variable name, which is player name like so. And then I will also print the player score and then the variable player score like so. So now let's go ahead and run the scene. So over here at the bottom, it's going to say player name is row and player score is 100. Great. Now we can see that player name is row and player score is 100. This is a really simple way to check if your variables are working correctly. Next, let's talk about how we can concatenate or combine the text and variables into a single print statement. This makes your output clearer and easier to read. So instead of printing like so, I'm just going to go ahead and erase this. And I'm actually going to erase everything in here. And I'm just going to start with quotes and write the players name is after I end my quote here, I'm just going to write this plus sign to concatenate and then I'll type in the variable player name and then I'll go ahead and click plus again and then open my quotes and write and the score is and make sure you don't forget these spaces or else your text won't look so pretty because directly after this quote is going to be the variable name. And for example, if I were to not have a space here, it would just write is and then 100 in the same without any spaces in between. So I'll click plus and then I'm going to type in str and then I'll write player score like so. So let's go ahead and run it. So now at the bottom, it's going to say the player's name is row and the score is 100. So over here, you're going to see that we had this str and then in quotes, we converted our player score, which is initially an integer because it's a whole number to a string. And this str with parentheses is a built-in function by Godot to simply just convert our number into a string here. It's much cleaner and we have a single line of output that includes both the player's name and the score. Another way to print multiple things is by passing them as separate arguments to the print function. This is sometimes easier than concatenation because you don't have to worry because you don't need to convert numbers to string. So instead of this plus, I'm just going to add a comma after like so and re basically replace all the plus signs with commas like so. And now if I were to try to run this, it'll print exactly how we intended it to. So in this version, we're passing multiple arguments to the print function, separating each with a comma. Godot actually handles the spacing and formatting for us. So as you can see, the output is exactly the same as before, but this method can be a little cleaner when dealing with variables and numbers. So what if we want to print something more complex, like an array or a dictionary? Let's go ahead and try that out. So I'll erase everything in my func ready, and don't forget that indent by clicking tab. And I'll just create a var, a variable called inventory. And inside this variable, I'm going to open these brackets and I'm going to add a sword, a shield and a potion. So in quotes, I'll have a sword and then I'll also have a shield. And these are all separated by commas. And then I will also have a potion like so. And then I also want to create var player underscore stats is equal to. And then in curly brackets, I'm going to have health, which is going to be set to 100. And then I will do mana, which is going to be set to 50. The variable inventory is an array and the variable player stats is a dictionary. And now let's go ahead and print these out. So I'm going to type in print and then I'll do in quotes inventory. And then with the comma, I'll just call my inventory variable. And then I also want to print 
player stats, and then comma player stats, the actual variable itself. And now when I go ahead and click play to run this, it'll print out the inventory, sword, shield, and potion, and then the player stats will be health is 100 and mana is 50. As you can see, Godot neatly prints both arrays and dictionaries, making it easy to inspect complex data structures. Finally, let's talk about how useful print can be for debugging. If you're not sure why something isn't working, printing values at different points in your script can help you figure out what's going on. Let's say we have a piece of code that checks a player's health, but we're not sure if it's working correctly. We can add some print statements to check the flow of the code. So I'll just go ahead and erase all this and I'll make a var player health is equal to 50. And now I'm gonna add a if statement. So if player health is greater than zero, then I just simply want to print player is alive with, and then after comma, I'll do player health and then in quotes, health. And then I'll add an else, which is just gonna say print player is dead, like so. So here we're printing a message based on the player's health. If the player is alive, we print their current health. If not, we print player is dead, and this helps us understand how our logic is working. So if I go ahead and hit run, because I set the player health to 50, it's just gonna say player is alive with 50 health. And I did mess up on this, so don't forget to add your spaces after the with, and I'll do after the health. So I'll go ahead and click this play, and now it'll say the player is alive with 50 health, like so. And now we can clearly see that the player is alive with 50 health. So we know the code is functioning as expected. If something goes wrong, you can print intermediate values to trace what might be an issue. So to summarize today, we learned how to use the print function to print basic text to the console, output the values of variables, combine text and variables into a single print statement, print complex data types like arrays and dictionaries, and use the print to debug our code. Using the print function is one of the simplest yet most powerful tools for making sure your code is working as expected. It's a technique you'll use again and again throughout your programming journey. Thanks for joining me today. If you found this video helpful, be sure to hit that like button and subscribe for more GD Script tutorials. And as always, if you have any questions, feel free to leave it in the comments below. Thanks for watching Code of the Row, and I'll see you in the next video. Thanks for watching.